we died last year on this very day god i miss him so much the sadness won't go away you're all very welcome to come to this very special place the sacred space really where we gather and have gathered every year for the last eight years you know we really are standing on holy ground the old workhouse used to be where the C2 is now located. So what was a workhouse is now a centre of education. So that's a very positive development for a place that represented great hardship and great sadness and great sorrow for so many people. And many of the people who were in that workhouse, who spent their last years and whose last resort was to go and seek refuge in the workhouse, ended up buried in this famine graveyard here. It is believed that there are at least 3,000 people buried here under our feet, and it is a great reminder of where we have come in our history, of the suffering of our ancestors, what they came through, the injustice that they experienced. We need to remember that, and remember that that's where we came from as a people. Plenty of food was being produced here, but was being exported to England. So there were no lack of food, but uh, landlords were closing the doors to the peasants, and the colonial government was keeping the export and the profit at the time. So we cannot say that it was just like a mistake when this was people's life was just an outcome of the system, a system of oppression that Irish people were enduring for a long time and thinking today there is still a lot of food in the world, plenty of food, there is no lack of food today if we think about it, but people are starving as well. We have hunger coming back. In Brazil, I, where I come from, the hunger came back with the pandemic, it made it even worse. We have 33 million people starving in a country that's known for exporting food that's known for the Amazon forest, where we have cows and all these kind of things, uh, like food being produced, but to be sold mainly to Europe or China. So people are starving in a country that's rich, has all the resources, and we ask ourselves, why is that? So being here today makes me think that's just not about remember, but about acting. The fact that we're here on this site and the layers of meaning that are so important that we're, we're walking on the same ground, but yet we want to learn from those steps that were taken before us to make new steps into the future. And I suppose part of that is going from our hurt to healing, but also to sustainability and what difference that we want to make. And we want to have a better future for people who are coming behind us. If you actually think about it, nobody will leave their home unless they have to. They have to uproot their families and their children, leave all what they know behind and this has been the Irish experience and we really need to look at our experience, the Irish experience, the famine experience, the experience of the 2030s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s and 1980s when Irish people had to leave for economic reasons and for other reasons. But when my dad went over to the West, he would absolutely freeze and he'd look and said, how did they survive it all here during the famine? Because he just couldn't see how they could live on the potatoes that had failed and on the very little that you could grow compared to what we had over here. Every government has a philosophy that controls the provision it makes for the weaker members of society. Sometimes we're not all that conscious of what this philosophy is. It's undiscussed. I think it might be quite hard to figure out what the government's philosophy is today. Whereas, at least with the British government of the 1830s, 1840s, you kind of knew what it was. Epidemics and pandemics cast a peculiarly sharp light on the societies in which they occur. Exposing cracks in the system, things that aren't functioning properly already, would break down completely when you get that boiling pot, that mess that we had under COVID, but we also had during the famine and the pandemics that came with it. 
They shuffle along in lines of grey, bent, downtrodden, they make their way. Lines of figures, once human in shape, now just a facsimile of the figures they ate. Grey of face and drooping of body, bent and wearied, worn with worry. They struggle along, each day the same, drudgery deflates their decaying frames. Endless torment is all they face, pain and suffering their daily grace. For this they suffer the peril and danger, thrown away like trash, treated with anger. Forever unwanted, denied and reviled, a mother begs as she holds her child. Will no one intercede or offer them aid, pretend not to see their sad parade? A world that can ignore a plight such as this is not one in which I wish to exist. Our duty is clear, yet no one will act. Our shame, our indifference, a shameful fact. We try to mix maybe story, music, history, more formal history and information, but also personal testimony of people who had experienced famine in other parts of the world as well. So it was really that mixture of turning ideas over in our minds and in our experience to see what we can find and how we can listen to the echoes of On Goethe Moore in the mid-1800s for the world of 2023. Some of these images here remind me and bring back to my own exact experience of what you have been talking about this evening. Almost all the things that I have mentioned there, we lived through in Ethiopia. This was a constant image from 84, 87, 88 in Ethiopia. What you described as the workhouses, you might remember the massive camps. The people came from the mountains to the roadsides, especially going north from Addis Ababa, to his camps every 10 miles. 50,000 people in them, 10,000 people in them. And they came in these brutal conditions. I stood in a camp and my mother, called Rester, came over as well to visit because we had found a cell phone. And we buried 100 people the next morning in a mass grave. And they were all over Ethiopia, you 3,000 buried here. But if you look at Rat Drum, the poor house in Rat Drum, there's over 9,000 people buried in the outside the poorhouse in Rat Drum. And that's exactly the picture we were seeing.